This next question uh, involves a little scenario, so let's have a look at the scenario. Mavis is driving to work in a new car when Daniel, driving a four-wheel drive, ran into the back of her car. Daniel was texting and failed to see Mavis brake. Mavis's car was completely destroyed. She suffered a broken foot as well as a non-serious neck injury. Mavis wants to be compensated for her medical expenses, which add up to a quarter of a million as well as for the cost of a new car. A new car will cost 23000 Okay, sounds like a bit of a smaller car. Thus, Mavis is claiming a total of $273,000 in damages from Daniel. Daniel has also been charged with the criminal offence of driving while texting. Okay, so it's a criminal. If found guilty, he could be fined up to $10,000 and lose his licence for 12 months. Mavis and Daniel are both Queensland residents. There's a number of questions that could be asked from this scenario, so let's go in and have a look at uh, what we're being asked to do. In which court will Mavis commence proceedings against Daniel Mavis? Who will commence them? Now, to do this, we've got to remember the jurisdictions of the court and what the actual act is. Daniel is running into the back of Mavis and causing her injury, okay? And it looks like Daniel is probably going to have a problem with negligence if he's texting, which we know is a tort. So we've got to understand what the area of law is or what the subject matter is. Given these facts, um, an injury caused by what Daniel was doing and doing something negligent here, um, I'm pretty sure we've got a tort issue. So would it be in the federal court? No, the federal court is about things like immigration, IP, consumer law. It's not going to be there. Would it be in the high court? No, the first instance jurisdiction of the high court, will remember, is what? It's constitutional issues. So that leaves us with the Supreme Court, the District Court and the Magistrates Court. How do we determine which court it will enter in the hierarchy? Well, remember that for civil actions, which is what's occurring here, Mavis is suing Daniel, um, we have limits, and in fact, monetary limits. Magistrates court, up to 150,000. District court, 150 to 750. Supreme court, 750 plus. So as we go up the hierarchy, um, the impact or the economic impact rises. So it's a more important case for first instance trial. So how much are, we, are the damages going to be here? 273. 273 is 150 to 750. So this one is going to be heard in the district court at first instance. Remember the important part of this question is knowing the jurisdiction of each court and then making sure that we can match um, the particular um, litigation to the right jurisdiction. That means knowing what the subject matter of the courts are, particularly uh, in the federal arena, and then the limits of the jurisdiction, particularly in the Queensland jurisdiction. Question eight. Assume Mavis won her case and was awarded 273000 in damages. Daniel decides to appeal. Which of the following is true? At first instance, Mavis was the plaintiff. Well, that's true. She brought action. And on appeal, she will be the defendant. Well, I know that this isn't true, right? Because the defendant never changes. What she becomes is the respondent. So that can't be true. At first instance, Mavis was the plaintiff, and on appeal, she will be the appellant. No, Daniel's appealing, so Daniel will be the defendant appellant. Mavis will be the plaintiff respondent, so that can't be true. At first instance, Mavis was the appellant. No, that's not true. She was the plaintiff. At first instance, Mavis was the plaintiff, and on appeal, she will be the respondent. The appeal will be heard in the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal. That actually sounds pretty accurate, right? Um, she will appeal. The appeal will go from the District Court to the Supreme Court, the Court of Appeal in the Supreme Court. She was the plaintiff. She will respond. Okay. Let's just make sure. 
At first instance, Mavis was the plaintiff, and on appeal, she will be the defendant. No, that's not true. Okay, it's pretty clear to me, D is our answer here. So there's two things going on. I made the decision based upon, you know, Mavis's, um, Mavis's uh, title. So yes, she's the plaintiff, then she becomes the respondent. And that's the only one with um, that correct in terms of the answer. Okay, so I know that it has to be D. I can also double check um, where the appeal will be heard. So the appeal will be heard in the Supreme Court. It won't go straight to the High Court. And remember, an appeal going to the High Court, you also need to seek leave to actually even have that appeal heard. Okay. Following on from question eight, assume the appeal case is reported in the Queensland Reports 216, starting on page 123. Which of the following is the citation? Okay, so who goes first? Okay, well, normally it's the plaintiff because they're bringing it, but with an appeal, it's the person who's doing the appealing. Okay, so we know that it can't be the Crown against Daniel. That's a criminal case. Maybe for the criminal issue about him texting, but not about the, the litigation with Mavis, so it can't be that one. We know that the person bringing the appeal comes first. So who's appealing? Daniel's deciding to appeal. So Daniel's going to come first. So it has to be either B or C, right? It can't be D or E, okay? Can't be D or E. Now we get a bit tricky. We've just got to know the order and the actual date comes before the date and volume comes before the law reports. So I know that it's B. B is my answer. I also know it's square brackets for this one because there's no volume number in the Queensland reports. It's done off the date. So question B is our answer there. Question 10. Assume the Crown decides to bring criminal charges against Daniel for driving while texting. Which of the following is correct? The Crown has the burden of proving to the jury beyond reasonable doubt that Daniel did commit, commit the offence. Well, A, if there's going to be a jury for this, that would be true. Okay, so the Crown has the burden and the level is beyond reasonable doubt. Okay. At first instance, Daniel will be the prosecutor. Oh, that's ridiculous. The Crown's the prosecutor. Um, Crown is the prosecutor, so B's incorrect. Daniel has the burden of proving beyond reasonable doubt he did not know. Right? The, the burden is on the prosecution, right? The accused person doesn't have to prove anything. Um, they have to uh, establish that there's a reasonable doubt. The Crown has the burden of proving to the jury on the balance of probabilities that Daniel did commit the offence. Well, the burden's correct. The, bound, the Crown has the burden, but it's not on the balance of probabilities. Remember, for a criminal matter, it's beyond reasonable doubt. So as I suspected, answer A is the correct answer. So let's take a little pause before we move on to question 11. <laughs> 